Hey there, viewers. Have you been concerned about your nutrition lately? I think it's crossed all of our minds during quarantine. There are so many nutrients you need to stock up on. Not saying you need to go vegan, but a lot of them you can't get from animals. Let's talk about eight of them in today's video. Is vitamin C one? What exactly is hesperitin? Wait, you can't get dietary fibers from animals? What the heck are pectins? We're talking all that and more. Number one, pectin. We're starting off with one you've probably never heard of before. Pectins are a family of prebiotic fibers. They are found in fruit. Pectins have several different health effects. How exactly do I say this? They help you go to the bathroom? Yes, pectins are known in the health world for their benefits on your colon. They help to promote bacterial growth. I don't mean to get graphic, but if you're suffering from diarrhea, pectin will make it easier. It will also help to maintain proper blood sugar levels. A study from years back showed that foods with pectin may help prevent colon cancer. Now, what fruits do you get pectin from? Well, for one, you can have an orange. It's delicious with a ton of different other nutrients. You can also find pectins in bananas, apples, and berries. What's your favorite fruit to eat on the go? Is it one with a lot of pectin? Sound off in the comment section and start a conversation with our bestie community. Number two, vitamin C. Speaking of oranges, we need to talk about this essential vitamin. It's another nutrient you can't get from cooked animal foods. When it comes to the things vitamin C can do for you, there seems to be no end. It allows you to manage your blood pressure, lowering your risk of heart disease. Vitamin C can also boost your immunity, reducing your risk of other chronic diseases. There's also science to show that the vitamin will improve your brain function. This helps jog your memory and allows you to focus. A heavy diet of meat will not give you the proper amount of vitamin C. You can get a little bit from raw meat, liver, and eggs. But for the most part, you're gonna need to get vitamin C from things like strawberries, potatoes, broccoli, peppers, and Brussels sprouts. Oranges are just the tip of the iceberg. Number three, catechins. This is another one a lot of you might not know about. I sure didn't until recently. Catechins are what are known as flavonoids, the most common group of antioxidants in plants. Much like vitamin C, catechins have amazing effects on your heart. People who drink green tea on a regular basis have displayed a lower risk of heart disease. That's because the catechins it contains reduce your blood pressure and lower your levels of bad cholesterol. Catechins will also improve the functioning of your blood cells. So what if I'm not a tea drinker? Do I have to start? Well, no. You can get catechins in a variety of other products. If we're sticking to fruit, catechins are located within apples, peaches, pears, and grapes. Actually, speaking of grapes, they're also found in red wine. But seriously, as an avid tea lover, I really suggest you try green tea. It's just so relaxing. Number four, hesperitin. Sticking to the topic of flavonoids, hesperitin is one of the most common around. While the jury is still out on its exact benefits, things are looking pretty good in the way of cancer prevention. Studies on hesperitin have suggested that it can reduce your risk of certain cancers. There's also reason to believe that it very well could prevent heart disease. Keep in mind that a lot more research needs to be done before this is confirmed. When it comes to foods that contain hesperitin, your options are kind of limited. But if you're a citrus freak like myself, you'll be happy to know oranges and lemons will satisfy you. Number five, resistant starch. Let's bring it back over to dietary fibers. Starch needs some love, folks. After all, it's the most common carb found in plants. While most starches digest well, a lot of starch is resistant to digestion. This type is called resistant starch. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, this may sound like it's bad for you, but resistant starch has several positive effects on your health. For one, it can promote the growth of healthy bacteria in your colon. Resistant starch can also satisfy your appetite. It does this by keeping you full for longer periods, making you less vulnerable to your usual snack cravings. Over time, you're gonna lose some weight. Also, if your blood sugar has gone through the roof lately, foods with resistant starch will allow your levels to be maintained. So what are those foods? Well, resistant starch is normally found in food with a lot of carbs. Take pasta, for example. We also have whole grain cereals to thank, not to mention potatoes and legumes. Number six, beta-glucan. Here's another dietary fiber you need more of. Beta-glucan is linked with numerous health benefits, most notably on your colon. I know the colon has been a common theme throughout this video, but it's just so important. When beta-glucan is digested, it stays in your colon and sits. Here, it stimulates the growth of healthy bacteria that helps keep the colon healthy. Outside of the colon benefits, beta-glucan will also lower your blood pressure to a normal rate, as well as your cholesterol. This will get your heart healthier. 
So what non-animal foods contain this fiber? The richest sources are normally things like oats and barley. You'll also find smaller amounts in things like rice, wheat, and rye. So if you're a big cereal person, this is for you. Before we continue, have you been waking up feeling groggy? Perhaps you need a little pick-me-up. Check out our recent video discussing 15 morning drinks you need to have for a refreshing day. Now back to our list of 9 nutrients you can't get from animals. Number 7. Lignans Funny name, right? Lignans are polyphenols found in things like seeds and cereal grains. Polyphenols are plant-based micronutrients with numerous effects on the body. Lignans are a particularly powerful kind. When lignans arrive in your colon, yes, I said it again, they become fermented in your intestinal bacteria. They are eventually absorbed into the bloodstream. This is after they become something known as phytoestrogens, which have health benefits of their own. These include fighting things like breast cancer and heart disease. So if you're at risk of either, eating more seeds and grains might be helpful. Number 8. Quercetin Let's move back to flavonoids. Quercetin is another one of the most common. The vast majority of plant-based foods contain quercetin to a degree. I mean, apples and cranberries for starters. Cocoa as well. You can even get quercetin from onions. I know that last one might be a bit of a turnoff, but just wait until you hear about the benefits quercetin holds. You'll be glad to know we won't be talking about the colon for this one. I'm pretty sure pectins and beta-glucan already have you covered. Quercetin's main benefits are more in the way of heart disease. Heart disease is the number one cause of death worldwide. Almost 18 million people die from it each year. In the United States, heart disease is responsible for one in four deaths. Pretty scary stuff if I say so myself. A diet that is high in quercetin is linked to lower blood pressure and reduced risk of heart disease. So if heart disease runs in your family, you're gonna wanna suck it up and eat some onions. Number 9. Inulin Ever heard of fructans? This is the fiber group inulin belongs to. Inulin is a prebiotic that stimulates the growth of positive bacteria. This will really benefit your, one more time folks, colon! Inulin is shown to improve your bathroom habits. Studies have shown that a diet rich in inulin helps to stimulate your insides and relieve constipation. The one problem is that you might experience things like severe bloating, which isn't exactly comfortable. This may also come with gas. That is, if you're sensitive to food like asparagus, artichokes, onion, garlic, and bananas, which are all high in inulin. If it doesn't hurt, give these foods a go and boost your inulin. Over time, going to the bathroom won't be as much of a pain. Your diet is crucial to your health. There are just so many important nutrients you need to get. Have I sparked your interest? Let's continue the conversation with a couple new videos, shall we? How about our video on six basic nutrients that affect your body? Or maybe you'd like to learn about nine of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Go ahead, click one, or better yet, watch both, and learn more about how to eat healthier. Do you get enough of the nutrients listed above? Let us know in the comments below.